pumps, the high viscosity pumps. So as I mentioned, um, the impellers really max out about um, 1,200 centipoise. Now, a progressive cavity pump can also pump water-like, but generally it's overkill. So we're, we're looking at these applications that are above 1,200 centipoise. So let's uh, talk about how these pumps uh, operate. So here we have what I call the, uh, the rotor. And the rotor is a single helix. And that uh, will turn in a matching double helix that I call the stator. And when you put these two components together, you can see that there's a, a cavity formed here where my finger is. And when the, when the rotor's in this position, the, the fluid enters over here. And as the rotor turns to this position, it now enters over here and alternates back and forth. So what went in the first cavity is now in this pocket right there. And then as it continues to rotate, it conveys up the around the contours of the rotor to the discharge barrel and then up and out. So in addition to be being able to handle high viscosities, uh, these pumps are designed to handle particles in suspension, uh, shear sensitive fluids, and these are great for higher pressure applications. We make these in, uh, in industrial models uh, for uh, adhesives, inks, epoxies, resins, so on. Uh, if we get into sanitary, we can handle food, like for example, honey, tomato paste. If we're into uh, the cosmetic industry, we're looking at uh, um, you know, creams, paste, gels, lotions, soaps, things of that nature. So in, uh, we have a couple different designs. And the first one I'm going to talk about is the GS. Uh, many of you may notice uh, in our models we have a F55GS or 560GS. The G stands for gearbox. So when we take a motor that turns 10,000 RPM, we need to slow it down for these uh, viscous applications. So this planetary gear is a 10 to 1 turndown. So if we're running 10,000 here, we're running 950 to 1,000 RPM where the rotor and stator are. Okay, so the, the GS version is rated to about 50,000 centipoise. Above that, we start looking at the S version. So let me put this down here, and we'll switch over to the S. And I happen to be uh, holding here an S version that also shows you that these pumps can be mounted external. Like I showed you the impeller pump a moment ago that can come out of the bottom of a vessel. We can do the same thing here. And you'll notice we have a tri-clamp inlet. So uh, these pumps can sit horizontal or vertical and do a 90 into it. And this little handy base plate uh, makes it portable, but we can also do it on a more traditional base plate as well. So I do want to show also the circular flange. There's no gearbox. There's no gearbox on this pump. So uh, we have a, a motor that also has a mating flange. So let me grab that. Okay, this little four horsepower air motor, air motor, you can see how that would mate to that flange, but we can also do an electric gear motor as well. And this uh, has a RPM controller, so the speed is limited to 950 RPM. Okay, so in addition to uh, that information, I'd like to also show you that uh, the majority of the units we sell have a Teflon stator, and the Teflon stator is a uh, uh, removable part so when it comes time to replace it you're not having to sell the metal you're just selling the, the Teflon piece so it uh, makes it very affordable for the customer but we also have uh, elastomer stators and these are good for, uh, for thin fluids but uh, we also have a food grade this is white NBR we have Viton as well so there's times when, the, when that might be a better solution maybe on abrasives and also keep in mind that <clears throat> there are vessels that have a baggy liner. So there's always the question, well, how do you keep that baggy liner from getting sucked into the pump? Uh, we have an accessory here that will basically pin the baggy to the bottom of the vessel. And then you can suck in here, no, no issue. Uh, some of you might be familiar with our older, our older version with the stator housing with the three and a half inch plate uh, welded to it. Now, the, um, these pumps are rated to 100,000 centipoise, and uh, we've actually pumped much higher. 
We pumped some cosmetic fluids or products at 250,000 centipoids. Uh, recently, we sold one for a million centipoids. It was very shear sensitive, but uh, we, we had a success with it without requiring any assistance. So, um, but there are applications where we where we need uh, much higher um, uh, capability for or capability for much higher viscosities. And here uh, we're going to hold up the uh, the ViscoFlux Mobile. And you can see this uh, this is a, a unit with a with a plate inside the drum here with a wiper blade that will allow the uh, the, the drum to be totally evacuated. While well, well, you're evacuating, you're wiping down the side wall of the drum. Now, we've all uh, drank a milkshake, and we know that uh, when the milkshake is full, we have no problem. But at the end, you, you have to start stabbing the straw around and stirring it. So that's that. That's what can happen in a in an application where you're successfully pumping the uh, the drum down just with a bare pump, but then about 20% less, you start running into problems. So this is the solution. Is this? Uh, I'll hold this up again. But you can see that this unit uh, comes with a with a pump and the plate with the wiper. Now uh, you can see that this pump actually rides on top of the plate and rides down with it as it as it goes down into the drum. The next image I'm going to show you is what happens when you have a baggy liner, and you can see the end result is that this uh, this unit. Uh, has emptied this entire drum, no residual product. At the end, there's an airline that will assist in raising this plate back up. Now, we also have, um, well, let's say, let's talk about the price point. This, this runs between $25,000 and $30,000, depending on whether we have an industrial version or a sanitary version. Um, that's, uh, you know, in the marketplace, that's a really good price, but, you know, it, it can be too much for certain customers. In which case we have the ViscoFlux Light, and that, that's uh, one without all the bells and whistles. And basically, it's a plate that sits on top of the drum with a supporting bracket, and you slide the pump through, and it'll pump it down in a similar ma manner, including whether it has a baggy liner or not. Um, there are competitors out there. One uh, is uh, Graco, and we've got uh, the, the potential ability to adapt a flux pump. I'm just showing the stator housing here, but we, we could uh, substitute our stator housing with this stator housing and then may potentially adapt to a Graco RAM unit. So that's, we're looking for a couple applications here to try that out. I uh, also want to show you uh, the uh, inside of these pumps, um, there's this uh, flex, flexible shaft here, and this has served us well for many decades, but there's an option to this if uh, there are ever breakage issues, and that's a carton shaft. And I'm not sure if anybody knows this exists within our product line, but it's a little heavier duty. And uh, if you ever run into an issue with breakage of the shafts, there we have a solution.